Okay, ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome. My name is Eric Cavanaugh. Today, we're going to dive into one of the hottest topics in our industry and the whole big data business, Hadoop in production, a study on the integration of big data technologies into the enterprise. This is some research being led by our friend David Lotion of DecisionWorks. David has done quite a bit of work with us over the years, and these days he's digging into the details of this hot topic. And folks, everybody is talking about Hadoop, everybody in the big data space, certainly. We're talking about the ecosystem here. We're not just talking about Hadoop 1.0 and MapReduce and all that kind of fun stuff. There's a whole ecosystem that has evolved, and quite frankly, I have never seen a topic or a whole area or a discipline received so much attention in such a short period of time as we have seen with this Hadoop movement. So again, Hadoop refers to the entire set of tools and products around the Hadoop distributed file system. Lots of very interesting things going on there, folks. And we've got four vendors on the line today, along with David Lotion. So we have an all-star cast lined up for you today. So just taking a look here, these are the sponsors. Big thank you to Waterline Data, Zoom Data, Teradata, and SyncSort for all their time and effort and for helping us bring you this content free of charge. It takes a lot of work, I have to tell you, to dig into the real nitty-gritty details about what is happening out in the world. We have a survey we're going to promote to all of you on the line today. Please do pass it around to your colleagues. We're trying to get a really good understanding of what folks are doing with Hadoop, how things are working, maybe what some of the challenges are, how big your team is, how did you get into the Hadoop movement, what are you using it for. We're really trying to understand the business use cases. What are people doing with this stuff? And I can tell you from my conversations offline and on various webcasts over the last few years, in the last year or so, many large organizations have moved beyond the sandbox level. So lots of companies, I heard a quote the other day on DM Radio, a guy said, I, I don't know a CIO who doesn't have some kind of Hadoop project going on. But a lot of that stuff is sandbox, but a lot of it is not sandbox these days. So there are companies, quite a few of them out there. There are various estimates. It's hard to say exactly how many. Some say it's around 1,500 or 2,000. It's hard to get that information. Let's just, just be honest here. But there are lots of real-world situations where this stuff is going into action. It's not really replacing data warehouses. There was a lot of talk about that early in the ecosystem development. It's really standing up next to those environments in most cases and then peeling off some of the work that maybe traditionally was done by a warehouse. So some of the ETL is being done now in a data prep space, as people talk about, and a lot of business analytics, a lot of the Hadoop implementations are being used to understand what's going on in certain areas of a business. Let's face it, any area that has a lot, a lot of data and a lot of different sizes, varieties, speeds of data, so on and so forth. So I'm going to go ahead and hand it off to David Lotion. He, I said, is the primary researcher on this project with his partner, A.B. Reifer. And with that, I'll uh, hand it off to you, David, and then we'll hear from each one of the vendors today. So it's an all-star cast, folks. With that, David, take it away. Thanks, Eric, and uh, thanks to, to the folks at Bloor who are uh, who we're working with to to do this research, and especially thanks to the sponsors, uh, those of whom you will be hearing from uh, after I give my my short little introduction. And I want to go back to something that uh, that Eric said. He said Hadoop is something everybody's talking about, and 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 that that kind of pinged a a thought of, uh, that was similar to that you know uh, I used to hear this joke: uh, everybody's talking about the weather, but nobody ever does anything about it. And that's kind of the core question, which is, which is, uh, everybody's talking about Hadoop. And even even two days ago, when I was doing a, a uh, presentation at, uh, at a conference, I was uh, uh, posed with with a question about about how to do something having to do with either master data management or data governance. And somebody in the back raised their hand and said, "Well, from what everybody in my organization is telling me, the answer is Hadoop." So the answer is Hadoop. But what's really the question? And and uh, what what we're interested in learning about is is the degree to which Hadoop has kind of uh, uh, turned tur reached its turning point or reached its tipping point in in its uh, integration into the enterprise. And so that's why I call I, I, I put the header at this slide: uh, emerging or, or maturing. Is it emerging technology or is it a maturing technology? And you could say that big data management and big data analytics, those are both uh, widely embraced if you were, all you did was read popular technology media. And there are a lot of case studies that are out there that talk about what people are doing or perhaps uh, more pointedly what people are, are capable of doing. 
Uh, but our question is, to what extent has Hadoop and the ecosystem that surrounds uh, Hadoop, and that includes, as Eric was saying, all, all the different components that are, that are layered into that Apache stack that in, are focused on big data uh, management, big data analytics, uh, et cetera, uh, to what extent has that been integrated into the enterprise? And I think there the question is not not have we downloaded the, the product and have we installed it on a, in a sandbox and have we played around with it, but rather uh, to what extent has it actually been melded into a hybrid uh, technology uh, uh, environment in the enterprise? So these are the kinds of, of questions that we want that we're raising on this survey, and that we're also looking to hear from uh, from some of our sponsors say about you know their perspective on this. Uh, understanding integration of Hadoop into the enterprise. What components of the Hadoop ecosystem have been piloted within the organization? Uh, what components have been fully integrated within business applications? How long have those applications been in production? We we want to see not just people saying, here's what we tested and here's what we saw and here's the experiment that we did, but rather we're actually building a data lake and here's how we're using it in our business applications. Or we're building, we've actually put together these, these types of, of data transformations that are being run using, using Spark. Or these are the types of business uh, analytics applications that we're running using the, the different types of, of, or different variety of, of analytics libraries that are available through one or more of those those uh, components. How, what are the resources that are required to move that application to production? And I think there we're looking to get an understanding as to what's the complexity of actually uh, transitioning from something as, as uh, broad and large as Hadoop uh, application development and how difficult and complex has that been to move that into the, the enterprise uh, data center. And just again kind of revisiting a a personal experience, we work, we're working with clients who are adamant about wanting to move, move their legacy systems into, uh, you know, from a mainframe into HDFS uh, and Hadoop, but it's all the details that are the issues, things like as simple or as simplistic as, well, are we going to take, how are we going to manage uh, supporting our, our existing Customers of the main, the files that are sitting on the mainframe when they're sitting in in EBCDIC and com, and uh, uh, compressed uh, uh, decimal formats, as opposed to do we expand that out into ASCII and uh, and and transition that file from from its original format into new format. I mean, these are not questions that are that are uh, are, are new when it comes to doing data migrations, but they are complex questions that need to be addressed. And they become more complex when you want to be able to do it in an environment that has to continue to support an existing uh, user base for legacy systems that you want to transition to new technologies. Uh, so these are the kinds of things that we're looking for. What are the biggest challenges in design, development, and implementation? How do the new applications perform according to a number of different defined cr criteria, speed, effort, complexity, and particularly cost, because uh, another, another famous phrase that I keep hearing is that, uh, you know, that uh, Hadoop is free. Well, yes, the software is free. Well, the storage is also free. Well, maybe not, but it's definitely less expensive than paying for, for high-priced high specialty appliances or, or large-scale mainframe systems. And then uh, last question, what are the opportunities for expanding the use of this technology uh, within uh, within the enterprise, how are you you, t you able to take it and transition it from replacing existing capabilities that already exist, so effectively re re renovating existing systems? But now that you've got the technology and the capabilities and the skills in house, how can you leverage the, that into developing new types of applications that didn't exist already in the environment? So these are the, these are the the focuses of this this research. Uh, we are definitely looking for people to uh, to fill out our survey, we're looking for people with experience regarding business value of Hadoop, technology choice, what type of distributions they're using, why they made those choices, staffing questions, how much, how many people are they allocating to that, what kind of skills do they have, uh, their considerations of the use of open source tools versus using proprietary uh, technologies, what are the challenges of executions, and then what are the levels of satisfaction. So here's a link. Uh, here, uh, which I doubt that you'll be able to click on, but I'm sure Eric is going to send out a link directly to this. And if you've got experience in your organization in testing out Hadoop, trying it, and being able to move it into some kind of production use, we are welcoming your your input on this survey. Uh, now, uh, we're going to
going to have a little bit of time later on for questions, but I'm going to hand it back to Eric to introduce uh, in in in, uh, in 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 sequence our uh, our sponsors so far. Okay, good. And let's go ahead and dive right in. I'm going to hand over to Oliver Claude of Waterline Data. Very interesting technology, Oliver. I'm handing the keys to you. Just go ahead and move the slides forward and take it away. Thank you, Eric. Hello, everyone. I am the Chief Marketing Officer at Waterline Data, and um, we've been around for about uh, two and a half years. Uh, if you want more information about the company, feel free to visit the website, which is waterlinedata.com. In the next few minutes, I'm going to give you an overview of what we do and why it's important to large enterprises that are implementing Hadoop, and in particular, a data lake. What on data is a company that offers a smart data catalog that allows your business analysts, data scientists, and data stewards to find, understand, and govern data in the data lake. The organizations that we work with uh, are typically, um, as I said, fairly large. Uh, they cross industries. So we have customers in insurance, healthcare, life sciences, manufacturing, and so forth. What they all have in common is that they're trying to get value out of uh, their Hadoop deploy deployment, whether it's on-premise, uh, so they might be using MapR, Cloudera, Hortonworks, Pivotal, in some cases even Amazon, uh, S3, and EMR. And they're really trying to open up the data lake to the business to get value out of all this data that they're putting in their data lake. Now, you've heard of the uh, metaphor of the data lake being a data swamp. Um, I'd like to offer a different way of looking at it. If you think about Hadoop uh, or your data lake as a um, more from a shopping uh, metaphor, uh, it's a little bit like a flea market. Uh, if you think about it, um, we were talking to a telco at some point, and what was interesting from their perspective was, you know, look, you know, we, we have 100 million fields of data um, in our data lake. How can anyone find or trust anything? If you think about it in the context of the people that are trying to get value out of the lake, you know, typically what we hear is, well, we have Hadoop, now what? We want the business to actually um, get value out of this. Now, because Hadoop is a file system, uh, out of the box, there's no business metadata, there's no nice UI for people to go and find and understand what's in there, um, it's really difficult for uh, business analysts or data scientists to really um, get value out of it. Even if you have a search tool, um, there's no index on uh, the business terms that tell you what's in a file. You can search on raw data, but it's so big, it's really hard to really find anything. From the perspective of uh, you know, the data governance teams and the data stewards, um, you know, people are worried, especially in industries where there's a greater focus on compliance. They don't know what's there. They don't know what's sensitive. They don't know what the data lineage is. And, of course, IT is trying to help the business. They're trying to empower the business to get value. Um, but this is so massive. There's so much data. Um, some customers have tried to custom build these data catalogs over their data lakes, um, but they find that it's really hard to keep it up, and it also is very difficult really as the, the, the volume of the data, the diversity of the data increases to um, really be able to do it um, and keep up with the needs of the business. So instead, if you take a step back, again, continuing with this um, shopping metaphor, instead of shopping for something at a flea market, uh, imagine um, shopping online with Amazon. I mean, it's really easy, right? Uh, you go to the Amazon.com website, you can search for a product, you can read about what other people have said about the product. Uh, with just a few clicks, you can find exactly what you want, and then you can order it and it gets shipped to you. And then on the back end, obviously, of course, this is hidden from you, but there's a lot of sophistication to actually you know, inventory everything that Amazon sells, and there's a rich catalog of all of the products. Well, metaphorically, that is what we do for your data lake, whether your data lake is on-premise or in the cloud, as I said, uh, regardless of the distribution you're running. 
Uh, what we do is essentially what Amazon does. Um, on the back end, the secret sauce of the product is that we can automatically build this inventory and this catalog of every data asset in your data lake right down to the field level. Uh, and we also discover additional information like what the sensitive data is, what the data lineage is. We provide a data quality assessment. We also allow people to um, uh, tag the data. Um, we surface all of this information into a self-service portal where business analysts, the data stewards, the data scientists can all work together to find, understand, curate uh, the metadata. And the users can then very quickly find the trusted data, the best data that uh, matches what they're trying to do. And then they can open this data up into their tool of choice. Uh, in fact, we just did a demo uh, at um, Strata San Jose um, a couple weeks ago with Trifacta and Cladera, showing the integration between our data catalog and a data wrangling tool and show the value of how we can accelerate the data discovery process. Uh, going from having to ask people around for, you know, who owns this data or where's this data, what's the best data, spending time manually exploring files, trying to find somebody who even knows how to get their hands on, you know, uh, how do people who know how to code. Um, we streamline that entire process, which is really 80% of data discovery, so people can really find the best data very quickly. So we sit between the raw data and the data lake as I said, and the end user tool. So people can use whatever tool they want, a data mirror, a platform, a Tableau, a Trifacta, a Paxata, whatever end user tool they want. We address the problem in the middle. Um, we inventory everything, catalog what you have in the lake right down at the field level. We allow people to find, understand, uh, share, collaborate their tribal data knowledge, um, all with the goal of um, accelerating their work in getting the fastest time to value. Um, and we also provide key capabilities around governance. In fact, we integrate with um, the data governance Hadoop infrastructure as well, for example, Kydar Navigator and Hortonworks Atlas. And with that, Eric, I'm going to turn it over to you and the next presenter. All right, that sounds good. And let's go ahead and move it on along here. I'm going to hand it over to Ruhala. Ruhala, I'm giving you the keys to the WebEx right now. If you would, just go ahead and move the slides forward and take it away. Okay. <clears throat> Thanks, Eric. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Ruhala from uh, Zoom Data. I've been with uh, Zoom Data for oh, um, about two years now. Um, <clears throat> we started our, our company. Um, uh, a little over uh, three and a half years ago, and really, what we the, the, the premise of Zoom Data and, and and what we started to see, being you know a, a team of, of BI practitioners and 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 data warehouse implementers and, and everything was that there were several disruptive disruptive trends within the industry all going on simultaneously, and so. One of them being big data and the three Vs of the variety of uh, velocity and volume. <clears throat> the other on the UX side and the expectations of, of uh, simple, intuitive interfaces that, that can easily be understood and, and navigated and, and um, uh, driven through, so, so I, which was a, quite a dramatic shift from, from the typical BI world uh, that, that got into more of um, design tools with um, uh, set reports and, and whole teams kind of just driven about the tool capability. Um, and then within the enterprise, the, the, the rise of, of DevOps, of moving toward more of um, uh, scale-out services and microservices approaches to, to software deployments. So, we saw an advantage to really uh, revolutionize the way that uh, BI is delivered uh, within the organization and that, that visual analysis 
really was taking a new shape and, and, and driving toward, toward new requirements. It required a, a, a different approach, and one that would be responsive to interactions from the business users, um, give them context, and um, move forward with, with a more um, fluid interface um, that allowed for uh, pretty deep exploration within these large data sets that, that are, are, were now being made available. Um, and then the, the other thing that we started to, 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 to take into account was um, how customers and, and individuals that are, were adopting big data, how they moved that and populated the, the, the data lake uh, to begin with, and, and bringing on and trying to take advantage of economies of scale. So um, enterprises bringing, bringing forward clusters, uh, spinning up that, getting teams you know, uh, knowledgeable with that, but then wanting to, to leverage those, those economies of scale and, and have a full stack that could, that could help them uh, do that in a, in a more agile manner. And, and of course, leveraging the, 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 the scale out and the multi, um, uh, uh, processor uh, frameworks that, that were existing today. So really taking that, that whole shift of instead of piping data to the computational uh, pieces and, and work and um, uh, programs, uh, moving those programs down to the data and, and, and handling, handling computation as close to the data as possible. So we created Zoom Data um, on, on, on those premises and, and really allow our customers to connect to data wherever it lies, I, whether it's in, in the data lake, on, on Hadoop and HDFS, whether you've got a SQL layer um, that's sitting on top of that, or whether you're using something like NoSQL or Search, or you've still got it parked in, in more traditional systems where um, that, that, are, that are powering those um, pieces of the enterprise and, and can't move out. And so we really want to take that strategy of, of ac making the data accessible wherever it is and augmenting what you, that, that large data set that you may have in the lake and, and bringing that up um, and, and making that uh, digestible in a format uh, for, for business users. And so, how we do that, um, we have our, our, our server software, but it also integrates pr really closely with the Hadoop, Hadoop ecosystem and specifically Spark. So we do a lot of our um, uh, analytics, uh, processing, uh, and uh, caching, uh, utilizing Spark as, as a scale-out platform to do that, gives us a, a nice open architecture for that, but also what customers love is it leverages those existing investments um, and, and gives them some, some more of that, uh, those economies of scale with, with their uh, clusters. And then our con connectivity architecture um, uh, allows, allows for access and, and pushing of that processing down uh, close to the data. We let um, enterprises also not necessarily have to bring all the analytics into the tool, but we also work well with custom development and, and embedding the analytics in the existing application. So th that's also part of where, what has been the evolution of Hadoop and, and the, the types of projects that have been done on, the, on, on, on that ecosystem, moving from, from more custom-driven solutions to uh, cost applications that, that can leverage and, and uh, integrate well. And then <clears throat> from the workload perspective, again, looking at those, uh, the ability to scale out, we utilize Spark to, to do that and, and to provide those, those scale out architectures. Um, uh, when more uh, processing power is needed, we can, we can add more servers in a very simple model, but then also leverage that, uh, jump out to the, to the customer Spark cluster when, when needed. Um, uh, for, for more computational workload or uh, additional uh, in-memory processing. Eric, that's... 
All right, a lot of content. In a short, so. yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of content in a short period of time. Good for you. Let me hand it off to Kiran Camreddy of Teradata. Take it away. Just move the slides forward. Let me know if you need help. The floor is yours. Okay. Thanks, uh, Eric. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Kiran Camreddy, and uh, as you can see on the slide, uh, I work at Teradata. Uh, I have been uh, working in the enterprise software industry for about 10 years across across a multitude of roles. And at Teradata, uh, I work on uh, our Hadoop portfolio where, where we are continuously working on uh, on the challenges of uh, enterprise adoption of Hadoop. So I, I agree with um, with some of the statements that uh, David and Eric made at the beginning of the uh, conference call that Hadoop is uh, definitely on the rise, but there are still challenges that remain to be addressed in terms of adopting Hadoop into enterprise enter enterprises. So in our conversation, conversations with customers today, we have a lot of our Teradata customers uh, uh, looking at Hadoop uh, and, 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 and uh, looking at possible ways of integrating Hadoop in the, in, into their data environments, but they come back to us and they talk about some of the uh, challenges that they are facing in terms of uh, the technology complexity that they have to deal with. So if you look at the entire Hadoop stack, uh, definitely uh, somebody, who, somebody who wants to uh, integrate Hadoop into the data environment, they need to have uh, an, uh, a certain level of in-house expertise to deal with uh, different Apache projects. Uh, of course, the Apache projects list is continuously growing, and, and you, really, you really need some sort of an expertise uh, in terms of uh, integrating those uh, different Apache uh, projects. And there are also, from a hardware and infrastructure perspective, there are many moving parts around server configuration, uh, networking, operating systems, Hadoop software, and tuning. So we come back, uh, customers who uh, uh, try to deploy uh, Hadoop by themselves and who uh, kind of do not have the necessary expertise, they come back to us with these uh, challenges. And some of them say that, I mean, Teradata, of course, is a very well known in, uh, in the appliance business, in the data warehouse appliance business, which is a very well packaged uh, offering, which is targeted for enterprise data center. So they come back to us and they really, uh, demand for an engineered appliance. Uh, at the same time, they want Hadoop innovations uh, uh, on, a, on an engineered appliance. So talking in terms of some of the other challenges that they face rather than technology, uh, they talk about uh, the complexity of like dealing with like multiple vendors across the stack. For example, in a commodity situation, you kind of have to deal with a networking vendor, uh, or procure operating, uh, procure a separate uh, operating system license, you probably need to like have some some sort of an uh, external help in terms of uh, tuning and uh, and uh, cabling the system. And and the reality of the fact is is that every vendor has their own terms and conditions, and there's a certain level of operational complexity in having to deal with the multiple vendors. And 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 today's Hadoop, though uh, there are some enterprise features evolving in the stack itself. Overall, if you compare it with what an enterprise data center has come to expect, it still kind of like lacks some of the features like high availability, resiliency, and an automatic uh, failover, and, and, and there is no real um, uh, uh, integration, uh, inbuilt integration built with other data systems. Most of, most of the integrations are kind of like custom uh, software, but there is no real uh, uh, built-in integration that, that, that is uh, delivered by Hadoop itself. And on an ongoing basis, uh, since there are a lot of moving parts to the technology itself, it becomes quite a complex task to support and maintain this, uh, maintain uh, this moving stack on an ongoing, on an ongoing basis. For example, uh, which of the vendor do you call if you have uh, a Hadoop job failing or something is not working? So it kind of becomes a bit of a troubleshooting job to figure out uh, which of the stack is responsible for this error, whether it's networking, whether it's OS, whether uh, your tuning is going wrong. So it come, kind of becomes tedious uh, when it comes to maintenance and support. So in order to address some of these challenges that, that, that our customers have come back to us, so what we have in our, how, uh, in, in our portfolio of Hadoop offerings is, is what we call a Teradata appliance for Hadoop. 
Uh, this is a uh, pre-integrated, uh, this is an offering which, which delivers either a Hortonworks or a uh, Cloudera distribution software in a well-packaged format. As you can see on the slide here, now, which kind of gives you a, a picture of how the appliance is packaged. The appliance has optimized hardware because we have been working with these customers and we have uh, 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 folks on the field who have been actually having hands-on experiences. We have like taken some of the best recommendations in terms of uh, uh, in terms of the right CPU sizing, right memory sizing, right disk sizing. So the appliance has got really optimized hardware to run uh, Hadoop jobs efficiently. And for the performance reasons, uh, we uh, package the uh, 40 GB per second infinity band interconnect to to uh, connect all the data nodes on the appliance, and we have and and we run the traffic on uh, in the network through a special protocol called Binet. And we do this because we realize that Hadoop can sometimes be uh, intensive, uh, can involve some intensive data transfer operations. And, 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 and infinity band really helps us with performance, with really high performance uh, uh, for our customers. The appliance also comes, uh, comes pre-packaged with, with some of the connectors, uh, which, which lets the Hadoop system to talk to uh, some of the uh, other data systems in the enterprise, like a data warehouse uh, or another Hadoop system. So we believe that uh, administration and ongoing uh, monitoring and management is, is, is a quite an important element uh, in an enterprise scenario. So we have uh, inbuilt tools like Teradata Viewpoint, which is a very familiar tool for uh, the Teradata uh, administrator. So what Viewpoint does is it allows you to like uh, do a continuous monitoring of all sorts of metrics on the appliance, uh, both at the hardware level and at the software le level. And we also have a component called uh, TVI, which is more like a phone home system, uh, which kind of monitors uh, your, your power cables, uh, your uh, disk capacities, and, and all kinds of hardware-related things. And if something is going wrong, wrong, it automatically creates an alert in the support system so that the Teradata uh, backend support uh, gets notified notified of it and, and we service the problem even before uh, the problem kind of like blows up and becomes even a bigger problem. So TBI, uh, uh, based on some of the data that we have collected, has helped us to really solve 60 to 70 percent of the problems even before the customer has, has become aware of it. And from a value-add perspective, uh, Teradata uh, supports the, uh, does a lot of contributions to the uh, open source of Presto project. So Presto, we have not yet begun to ship Presto as an every unit appliance, but we have all the connectors in place and we plan to uh, ship Presto uh, as an every unit, every unit item on the appliance. And in addition to the Presto, we have uh, several uh, offerings from our services uh, arm, the services arm called uh, ThinkVig. Uh, which are complementary to a lot of things that uh, goes on the appliance. So some of the things, uh, here is how we solve some of the challenges uh, that I kind of uh, mentioned in my first slide. The appliance is really an engineered and ready to run platform. All the uh, hardware, software, networking, and testing is already done on the appliance. What the appliance really brings to the table is it really offers a faster time to value proposition by not letting the customer stand up the infrastructure and deal with some of the operational issues on the appliance. The appliance uh, comes with some of the best, best in class high availability features uh, because the appliance has a Binet software, uh, the appliance has uh, Infinity Band, which has dual networks. It has a lot of failover mechanisms. If something goes wrong on the appliance, you still have another failover uh, network. So what this really contributes to is, is the availability of the appliance on a 24 by 7 basis. The appliance delivers a lot of, lot of the uh, uh, pre-built integration built into the appliance so that uh, it makes it easy for the customer to uh, integrate the Hadoop appliance with, with some of the uh, uh, traditional data warehousing stuff. And, some of, and, and, and a lot of our customers really like the ability to contact a single vendor uh, because uh, Teradata is responsible for all the uh, stacks, including Hadoop, including OS, including networks. So they just have a single phone number to, to, to call if they run into any issues. 
And on a longer term, the appliance offers a, a lower TCO value proposition because of the uh, reliability advantage that you get from some of the high-performing components on the appliance. And, 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 and the appliance is differentiated in the market compared to some of the other appliances because we uh, offer the appliance in three different configurations called balanced capacity and performance. We think that we need different configurations uh, to support different workloads like Spark, which is more CPU intensive, and, and uh, some of the ETL workloads which are less CPU uh, intensive. We also offer a choice of uh, Cloudera or Hortonworks on our appliance. So that, that's about the uh, appliance offering that we have. And, and we also uh, are working on some of the big data ingest problems uh, that, are, uh, in the, that are existing in the current uh, big data space. So what we have seen is a lot of our customers have had challenges in terms of getting this data. Uh, uh, be it real, be it uh, real time, be it uh, mini real time, or be it batch mode, there are existing solutions in place, but but they are not really built for this unstructured data. They are not really built for capturing click stream data or, or especially the IoT space. Existing solutions are are, are more of a, a bespoke, a bespoke, and they exist in silos and. And, and like adding like a, adding a new stream and, and any operational activity on the existing solutions is, is kind of like really hard and difficult. Uh, scalability is is something that uh, a lot of the traditional solutions were not really built for. So we thought uh, the whole big data ingest needs a relook, and 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 what what the space really needs is a easy to use easy to use. Uh, enterprise cloud subsystem, which is centralized, which is fast, and which is really built for today's uh, big data space. So Teradata Listener is a is, is solution that we currently have. Uh, we have a dedicated engineering teams uh, in Austin uh, working uh, dedicatedly on this solution. The solution is really built on, on, on it, it, this is built for the big data uh, real-time streaming space. So it employs a lot of modern software engineering principles, uh, like uh, uh, a lot of the listener has had some components from Kafka, components from uh, Cassandra. It uses Mesos, uh, OpenStack. Uh, it, it's built on REST API. So it's a really modern solution uh, uh, built to address uh, the real uh, the challenges in the real time space. So listener is, in, uh, is a solution which which has uh, uh, an easy uh, ingest pattern. And, and we have, what we have seen is it's really difficult for developers and programmers to add multiple streams. So what we have built is, is a, is a, a self-service uh, self dashboard where, where people can, where users can easily add, uh, uh, add, 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 add sources from which uh, data streams could be drawn and easily add targets. Uh, targets are the destinations where these sources would go to. So our objective was to like really build a easy to use uh, a solution which is uh, which can be used by users in a self-service uh, manner. Uh, lastly, I would like to uh, point out to point out our Think Big uh, services. So Think Big is a pure play. A big data services company that we have acquired uh, in the past year. And think we are, are, are uh, one of the first guys to work and help some of the technology companies with their big data problems. So what we really wanted was to really help our customers to uh, uh, customers to have the right foundations. Uh, uh, so we have uh, uh, so we have uh, uh, three service offerings which are geared to that. Uh, to help them educate on uh, architecture, the implementation plans. We also have uh, a service offering around data log foundation. So which means we, with this service offer uh, helps to create uh, and develop pilots around their data lake projects. And we have a full-fledged uh, data lake analytics engagement where, we'll, where ThinkBig helps with, develop, helps with developing the uh, actual uh, analytic, analytics on their uh, uh, data lake data. So, so in summary, uh, what I wanted to say is like Teradata is really working on, on, on solving the problems in the space of uh, enterprise Hadoop adoption. And an appliance for Hadoop is, is, is one way that we are solving the problem by really cutting down the time to take, the time taken to like deploy and implement Hadoop. Back to you, okay. Eric. That's fantastic. All right, and Tendu, last but certainly not least, let's hand it off to you, take it away. 
Let me know if you need help moving the slides. The floor is yours. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Tendu Yokuchu. Uh, I'm the general manager for SyncSource Big Data Business, which is uh, uh, compromising of uh, data integration uh, product line on Linux, Unix, Windows, on uh, big data platforms, including Hadoop, Apache Spark, and uh, uh, also cloud platforms like Amazon and Google Cloud and Microsoft. ThinkSort uh, is a software company uh, with focus on high-performance, scalable uh, data processing software. We have been around over 40 years, started on the mainframe side, uh, uh, and uh, provided products, uh, data integration products on Linux, Unix, Windows, and uh, uh, most recently on the big data end. And uh, I think the important thing to know about SyncSort is uh, 87 out of Fortune 100 companies are our customers. We have over thousands of customers uh, globally, uh, very large enterprises. And today I will be uh, talking to you about uh, what we are seeing in the Hadoop and big data adoption and the challenges that uh, we help our customers and uh, uh, these uh, enterprises uh, uh, tackle. Our strategic focus can be uh, summarized in, uh, 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 I think, uh, three ways. One, we have been an ongoing contributor to the open source projects. And uh, uh, we started uh, with Hadoop MapReduce, uh, contributed to uh, Hive, Scoop, Parquet, and uh, Spark packages uh, most recently. And we were, uh, in fact, uh, in the top 10 contributors uh, for uh, Hadoop version 2 and uh, Yarn. And uh, this, uh, uh, our strategy on the open source contributions basically is one, to really have close partnerships with the uh, players like uh, Hadoop vendors and uh, uh, big data uh, ecosystem players. So we can jointly make sure the platform is ready for enterprise adoption. So maturity of the platform is important for our customer base. So uh, by our open source contributions and partnership, uh, we try to uh, ensure that. And our uh, strategy is also we leverage uh, our very lightweight and light footprint uh, core data integration engine uh, in uh, Hadoop by uh, leveraging the orchestration and scale-out architecture of Hadoop. Our lightweight engine uh, has been deployed in financial services, in insurance companies, telco, and um, healthcare and uh, retail. So these corporate, these enterprise organizations never dealt with small data, even before the big data became a, a term. The volume and variety has been always there, and uh, we, uh, we leveraged this lightweight engine and uh, partnered with uh, Cloudera, Hortonworks, Mapar, Dell, and uh, uh, many of the big data players to really uh, offer a very uh, strong uh, product. And it's a fast tuning engine, which is basically uh, eliminating the need for turning 300 knobs to tune uh, the applications. And it's uh, running as part of the Hadoop flow and Apache Spark uh, data flow natively. And uh, I already mentioned that partnerships are a very strong uh, part of our strategy in this space. Now, what does our product uh, do? What do we offer uh, to the uh, organizations? We help organizations uh, to basically access and integrate their data in a secure and optimized way. And uh, I'm just going to quickly go over what we mean by that. Uh, we see that uh, phase one of for each of these big data initiatives really start with creating a data lake or enterprise data hub. And uh, though this is a very critical uh, uh, part of the uh, big data initiative, it is not a very easy task, especially uh, if there are significant number of data silos in the organization. And if we look at the financial services, banking, insurance, healthcare, Calco, these organizations often have uh, data silos. 
And uh, accessing all of the enterprise data means ability to access relational data stores, access data from legacy mainframes, uh, MPP stores, hierarchical data, NoSQL, and now uh, streaming uh, data sources in a simple and unified way. So that's what our product does as uh, part of uh, populating the data lake. Through a single graphical user interface, uh, the users are able to define uh, uh, these uh, data sources and also automatically map the metadata to the target uh, in uh, uh, Hadoop or distributed uh, storage. And uh, with integration, uh, we also leverage the single interface uh, to uh, converge the batch and uh, uh, streaming data sources. Because if organizations are trying to uh, uh, make sense of their telemetry data or uh, streaming data from sensors, they need to really access the historical reference data. You will not be able to get insights from this uh, streaming data without uh, referring to the historical data, without integrating that uh, uh, with your historical data stores. So uh, we provide that integration, and we provide that integration in a very flexible way that uh, leveraging the Hadoop uh, or uh, Hadoop MapReduce or Apache Spark, the underlying compute framework, however, running our engine natively uh, in that so we can really do the dynamic optimizations and fast tuning uh, based on uh, data volumes, data variety, and uh, the uh, uh, topology of the cluster. And compliance is a very big part of it. It's uh, almost uh, uh, it's a default for us. It's, another, it's not an option because if you are in these highly regulated industries, uh, uh, you have no choice. We were, in fact, uh, one of the first vendors to have seamless integration with Kerberos and uh, Clouder at Sentry and Apache Ranger, and uh, uh, we also integrate with Clouder and Navigator because we have been an open source contributor and because our engine is natively running in the Hadoop data flow. Some of these things happen very easily and organically. For example, in Clouder and Navigator, you can see the data lineage and uh, see a source target. Uh, we need easily for our uh, 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 what's happening in our uh, product. And moreover, uh, Oliver was talking about how difficult it is uh, to have a catalog of your data in Hadoop. Imagine now these organizations have data moving from mainframe to Hadoop Teradata uh, or Oracle uh, to Hadoop or across the board, uh, uh, across platforms. Being able to have that lineage uh, through uh, our product uh, definitely also integrated with Navigator or Atlas definitely helps the organization. And doing all these things in a very simple way is really the core value proposition. We talk about this as design once and deploy anywhere architecture. And this is a true design once, deploy anywhere. You can use the same exact data flow where you specify your data sources and data transformations and whether you are feeding into a visualization uh, a tool like Zoom Data or analytics tool uh, uh, or like ClickView. And uh, you are really uh, using that same data pipeline that you can run it and test it and debug it on your laptop, take that, run in Hadoop MapReduce, and run it the same way in Apache Spark. That insulating future proofing is a key value, value proposition, because when people move their applications from MapReduce version one to Yarn, with our product, they did not have to recompile a single line of code. Everything ran without any changes. Same thing we are guaranteeing moving into the new compute frameworks, uh, such as Apache Spark. And uh, some of the I'm trying to progress this, uh, yes, okay. And one of the things that uh, we see as part of this uh, building the data lake is uh, I mentioned there are many different sources of silos of data in the organization. So one can only make uh, the most out of uh, their data and uh, get the best insights by bringing also 
data from legacy stores. That includes mainframe. Because SimSort has such a strong uh, heritage and expertise in the mainframe, we do that better than anybody else, any other vendor, uh, while integrating with the emerging data sources and uh, uh, cloud and databases and files. Uh, so uh, we, uh, we uh, have many organizations uh, uh, in the sense making this easy from a, uh, de uh, defining the applications perspective, making it easy in terms of uh, compliance. Uh, if you want to keep the data in its original format, uh, fine. Uh, we make MapReduce and Spark understand these legacy uh, uh, data formats. If you want uh, to uh, actually uh, archive and move this data to, uh, permanently to Hadoop, we also help with that by doing auto uh, mapping of metadata and make a lot of complex uh, tasks very simple for the enterprise. We even built a tool uh, for uh, simplifying the uh, simplifying the creation of the data lake. This tool uh, uses uh, our data integration product. However, generate hundreds of uh, they basically populate the data lake for hundreds of uh, uh, tables at once, at a single click. Today, actually, we had a webcast at noon. One of our insurance customers talked about how we have improving uh, developer productivity and reducing development time in their environment. Uh, uh, they are uh, basically uh, uh, moving data from uh, 800, over 800 tables, and uh, our product uh, automatically maps the schemas to hive tables and uh, populates the data lake in one uh, click. So to wrap up, basically we offer a data integration product uh, uh, on top of the uh, distributed compute platforms. Uh, our uh, uh, single uh, interface design once deploy anywhere, uh, whether it's Linux, Unix, Windows, or Hadoop Spark, or Cloud, really uh, reduces the development time. It helps the organization leverage existing skill sets with their data engineers, focus data engineers on getting insights from data instead of trying to have uh, uh, data preparation and uh, tuning on the clusters, and future proofs for rapidly changing ecosystem. And this obviously turns into higher return on investment, and it also really increases the productivity, accelerating your go-to-market uh, uh, new go-to-market uh, opportunities and uh, uh, putting new products uh, in the market. Thank you. All right, folks, we just plowed through a mountain of content there. We've got some good questions lined up for you. Let me go ahead and jump around on some of these slides. I'll throw the first one over to you, Oliver, because you talked about the importance of being able to navigate a data lake, and of course, once you have massive amounts of data in there, and as you suggested, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of fields, that's not a small issue. Can you kind of go a bit more into how it is that waterline data automates the process of aligning these fields and enabling discovery? Sure. Um, so uh, technically, the product um, installs right within the cluster, so we install on an edge node. Uh, we crawl every file that you land in Hadoop. Uh, we parse profile every file to understand its technical metadata. And then we have pre-built rules in the product that can look at the actual values um, of each field in a file and infer the semantic meaning and automatically tag the field. Um, so, in a very quick nutshell, that's what the product does. There's also an aspect of uh, being able to import a business glossary. If you have one, uh, leverage those definitions to tag the fields. Uh, and there's also an element of learning the tribal data knowledge. So we do allow, uh, as needed, a subject matter expert to tag a field uh, or change the automatically tagged meaning of a field. And the system learns from that and is able to propagate that tag to other fields in the data lake that contain similar values. Um, similar, similar values. So essentially, you know, very quickly you can combine the best of automation with crowdsourcing and machine learning all in one product to give you this 
uh, rich, always up-to-date catalog of every individual data field you have in your data lake so people can find exactly what they need. Yeah, and that uh, curation part, it seems to me, is pretty important. Can you kind of speak for a minute about how that curation side of the equation comes into play, meaning specifically individual subject matter experts being able to manually alter what Waterline suggests? Yeah, so basically you can assign different domains of business um, entities to different people so they can own them and have control over uh, approving or rejecting or changing uh, the tags. Um, and that's baked into the product. Uh, so that's one of the ways in which people can curate the actual tags. Okay, good. And let me jump over to Ruhala here and have you talk a bit about how Zoom Data works. I've, of course, taken a demo of Zoom Data, and I can tell you they've done a lot of heavy-duty engineering under the covers in order to expedite the process of letting you navigate through very complex and very dense data sets. So one of the issues really in the whole world of analytics is not just loading the data, but then being able to navigate through the data in a meaningful way. And what I mean by that is being able to go very swiftly from one set of data and one interesting visualization, drill down to a lower layer where you can get much more granular data that helps tell the story. So that's the real key with analytics is expediting that timeline and Rahala, that's something you guys have done very well. Can you, can you explain some of the underpinnings? Uh, you have this graph here that, that kind of goes into some detail, yeah. but can, can you explain why you've been able to get such speed and such depth? Sure, maybe um, the previous uh, slide is a little better. Yeah, great. So um, it, it all kind of comes from, stems from our, our processing pipeline. So. Um, and, and then our, our UX. So, so first, first kind of answer is the, is the time to analytics. So um, from the, from the get-go in Zoom Data, once we connect to a data source, uh, users can start visualizing that data um, uh, and uh, creating dashboards, uh, interacting with the data. And, and this, is, this is mainly due to the fact that we've, we've completely bypassed the need for a um, design tool or, or designer kind of step to, to say, okay, this is, the, um, this is the particular view and this is the navigation path through the data that must be explicit. So, so, so that's, that's one piece of it is the, is the actual UX. Um, the, the other piece of it is our, is our uh, stream processing pipeline. So that's uh, more or less logically depicted here. But, it basically allows us to uh, uh, do what we call data sharpening and using an approach that, uh, that we patented um, uh, that, that, that we affectionately call microquery. And, and what, it, what we do is, is we basically, um, in a non-blocking way to the analyst, allow a query to be issued against a large amount of data, uh, but then we issue other subsequent smaller queries that um, through our data profiling and understanding of the data source, we determine that they'll, they'll return a lot faster and provide the analysts the gist of what uh, they may be seeing from a particular source. And that allows the analysts to, to make decisions on the fly as they're, ex as they're exploring the data. So perhaps they, they decide to um, view a customer profile and they're looking at you know, customers by gender and then they decide that's not interesting, they want to pivot that. They, they can, they're able to do that and make those determinations with, with, without, you know, a pinwheel or having, you know, some super long query um, that they really didn't mean to fire, um, uh, uh, block them until it returns. Yeah, that's a really good point. What you just mentioned there is really quite interesting because, again, if you're dealing with significant latencies, I know my own impatience, and if I even launch an application on my Mac, which takes 14 seconds to load, I get irritated because I didn't want to launch that application. I was going for a different one. So there are even times when people will just accidentally hit the enter key and encounter some frustration. And you've really found a way to solve that by just expediting this whole process, right? That's, that's right. That's right. And, you know, a lot of the 
uh, applications within Hadoop, you know, the, the business users don't don't really get a lot of excitement out of a query that used to take two days, now taking two hours. They they want it to take two seconds or less than a second. And so that's that's kind of the, the, the paradigm of shift from from you know getting getting what a Hadoop powered application into the hands of the of the broader audience is, is also sometimes the lack of appreciation for how far things have come. But uh, you still have the expectation of the, you know, the less than three second response time. Okay, good. And let me go ahead and jump over here to bring in Kidun Kamredi from Teradata. There was a question about what differentiates you guys from some of the other big players in the space. And obviously that's an evolving question. But can you kind of talk about what makes uh, the Teradata approach to this whole world special compared to other products in the market? Yeah, so uh, that's a really good question because when I saw the question, I thought uh, the uh, uh, the, uh, the, um, the attendee was referring to a traditional data warehousing appliance. So this is a Teradata appliance for Hadoop. So what you get on this appliance from a software perspective is is the pure Hadoop distribution software that you would get from Cloudera or Hortonworks otherwise. So there is no Teradata data warehousing data warehousing software on this machine. So what we have done is we have actually taken the Hadoop software uh, and we put it on the appliance so so that it becomes easy for our customers to get started with with working on the Hadoop use cases rather than trying to like install the Hadoop, configure different parameters, uh, figure out how Spark is connected to Hive how Spark is like connected to HDFS. So we have solved all those problems by uh, through this package solution so that you have access to ready-made Hadoop uh, that you can put it in your data center and start working on your uh, business use cases. Some of the other solutions that you that the, that the uh, attendee mentioned, uh, like SAP HANA and then an IBM Pure Data System, so they are completely different systems uh, addressing completely different problems. So the appliance for Hadoop is, is more about a prepackaged uh, uh, Hadoop uh, version that we that 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 we are delivering in the market today. Does that sounds like an answer, Eric? <laughs> oh, that's good. No, that's real good. Uh, and we're going a little bit long here, folks. We'll go just another couple of minutes. If we don't get to your question, I'll be sure to pass it on to the presenters today. And let me go ahead and throw up a slide that you refer to Tendu in your uh, presentation, you made a really good point that you want to be able to future-proof the computations that you design and be able to move them from one environment to another. And, and I'll also extend the question to you besides expounding on that. You guys have a very interesting story with respect to Hadoop. You've been involved from the get-go. Can you kind of tell the audience a bit about uh, how early you got into the game and what it is that you enabled in the Hadoop environment? Uh, sure. Uh, we actually uh, started having discussions with our evangelist customers, uh, uh, like da data uh, heavy uh, organizations. Uh, Comscore was one of our evangelist customers at the time, and uh, uh, in 2011 uh, we started contributing uh, to the open source, and uh, this was really a, a more uh, prototype stage for us to see if we will have a unique uh, sustainable value proposition and help uh, accelerate the adoption of Hadoop in the enterprise. And partnering with uh, Hadoop vendors has been a key. Partnering with customers have always our uh, uh, strength because uh, we have to make sure the products and the solutions we deliver are really solving uh, production uh, uh, level uh, um, deployments are uh, helping customers solving business uh, problems. So in uh, uh, open source was a very new area for us and uh, turned out to be more challenging uh, for a proprietor software vendor who has been around over 40 years. And uh, that's just through a kind of a, uh, new uh, and very, very rewarding experience. Uh, we worked uh, with Clouder and Hortonworks very closely uh, to uh, um, uh, progress uh, through the contributions and also develop that relations uh, in the open source ecosystem. 
our joint customers uh, ultimately also helped us. Uh, we uh, had a generally available product uh, at the end of 2013, second half of 2013, and uh, uh, we have been in production uh, since then. It takes uh, a couple of weeks for us to really uh, install and uh, have a first production deployment uh, within the organization. Okay, good stuff, folks. Well, uh, David Lotion, if you're still out there, any closing comments from you? Uh, the only thing that I would want to say is that, that clearly there's evidence from the fact that these guys have such robust uh, uh, stories that there are people out there who are, who are making some hay with Hadoop, and, and I would really like to hear more of those kinds of stories. So, again, if you could uh, uh, be kind enough to, to send out that link for uh, the, the listeners to share uh, with us their stories and to share the link with others so that others can share their, their experiences through the survey, that would be uh, that would be great to help us build build a, a better understanding about how uh, the the best ways to be able to move Hadoop at, into the emerging hybrid enterprise environment. You bet, and folks, I did just post that link, so please go to your chat window, click on that link. It's for SurveyMonkey. We'll also follow up that with the webcast. But very, very big thank you to all the, those of you who are out there, and of course those who asked questions. Thank you very much for those, and thanks to all the vendors, Waterline Data, Zoom Data. Teradata and SyncSort, let me tell you, this is a fast-moving space. It really is quite fascinating. One of the final comments I'll make is that open source really has quickened the pace of innovation, and it's a foot race these days. And what I mean by that is the companies that open source their technology, a lot of times there will be companies that sit on top of these technologies. You see it all the time with some of the vendors on the line today and some of the others that are big in the space. And they'll have their own latest version, which has not yet been open sourced, and that can be their edge, so to speak, against the competition. But everything is moving open source, or not everything, but most things are moving open source. Uh, there's still some pretty big closed source vendors out there. That's probably going to continue, obviously. But it's a fast-moving space, and we're going to be focus focusing on it intently here in our research and in our webcast. So big thanks to David and his team. We'll talk to you next time, folks. We do archive all these webcasts. We'll share it with you very shortly. And with that, we're going to bid you farewell. Thanks again. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, everybody.